Good morning and welcome back to you Regina 120. I'm Jeff Cliff and I have uh, another lesson for the I guess YouTubers of the world today. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, what this series is feel free to check out some of the other videos in it. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, a little bit of math. Uh, we're going to try to describe what's valuable about the exponential and log functions. And so this is something you've probably encountered before. I know I encountered it a little bit. There, there must have been at least one uh, class or, or day where they covered it during high school and uh, it didn't really stick. Uh, so they, they, they did teach some of the, the basic laws surrounding the log function and uh, certainly they, they covered the exponential function. Uh, but it was always kind of, you know, just another uh, you know, polynomial-like function to me. Uh, and it was always just another tool in the toolkit. It didn't really look like it was going to be important. Uh, but it turns out to be very important. Uh, now, some of the importance is going to be hard to state without knowing more calculus. Uh, and I don't want to get into that part, uh, but just so you know, uh, if you dig deep enough into calculus, if you come back to uh, exponential and log functions, they will uh, get a lot more usable and a lot more friendly to you. But assuming you haven't done that yet, uh, we want to, uh, I guess, take a look, a little bit closer look. What, what do they give us? So uh, now, uh, as mentioned, it's, it's kind of an important thing. Uh, first of all, the, the one of the most important uh, reasons to pay attention to the exponential and log functions uh, is that it tends to catch people off guard uh, when they come up in practice in data. Um, and they do come up uh, frequently enough that this is an issue, where if you, for example, get our trusty writing materials out. If you have some data uh, and you start uh, encountering the data, the first thing you probably end up doing is trying to model the, the data or, or model the situation. And the, the natural way of going about this is by drawing a line be between the data points, which in this case gives you a pretty good fit. And of course, we're not going to get too much into linear regression or uh, anything like that, but you can just imagine if you're uh, encountering data points, like for example, you're running a lemonade stand, and you start getting sales, and the sales are slowly going up, and so you kind of try to project in the future a little bit what, what exactly happens, uh, and so you have this line of projection or line of what you think is going to happen to the data. And then over here, as your uh, you know, x in this case uh, starts to uh, increase, your y increases a lot more than your, uh, uh, you would expect given the beginning uh, of your, your sequence or your, or your series uh, as it may be. Uh, and you're left with a projection that is not even close to uh, something that's basically off the map. Uh, and so this happens all the time with exponential functions. And the reason that your log function uh, is relevant here is because the you, you can actually plot a function as it grows on a log graph. Whereas most of the time uh, when you're doing graphs in high school, with the exception of uh, maybe once you start getting into the conic functions where you can start playing with the scale so that the x scale isn't the same as the y scale, uh, usually you end up only doing so with kind of constant amounts. So instead of these two being equal, maybe two and four, two and four, you can play around with it so that You end up getting a, a three and a seven on one axis, and two and four on the other. So you can make ellipses, you know, that are always easy to draw, or something like that. But having a log graph is a little bit more complicated. And you don't always have the same graph on both axes. You can have one axis with. Kind of a regular uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and normal number or natural number line. And then this line you 
can have it increasing by orders of magnitude for every kind of tick on this chart. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to graph things that are growing very rapidly uh, as if they were projected on this kind of scale. So if you have something that, let's try to draw our previous graph here. It'll look something like this. Or maybe something like that, where it's roughly zero or, or practically perhaps even below the line. Then below the line, you're just dividing by 10 each uh, tick on this uh, axis here. So below the zero uh, it wouldn't even necessarily be a zero line. It would be a 1 over 10 line. So every graduation on this line, you're dividing by 10. And so on this, you can plot the data. Uh, so if this is you know, 1, 1, 1 would be here. Uh, 1 half would be somewhere over here. You know, 2, 1 would be 2, and then 1 around here. But the date, if you wanted to plot something that grew exponentially, it would look actually like a linear line on this graph because the line, uh, or, or the you're, you're gaining a, a unit of 10 for each, uh, I guess, centimeter or, or you know, whatever this distance is. And so you're, you're gaining a, a, a constant amount in this exponential space for a finite amount or for a constant amount in linear space. Uh, it might be a little hard to, to, to describe or understand, but uh, again, where the important thing to note isn't necessarily that you know all this stuff is going on so much, it's that there's this line here, that there's this constant relationship between this exponential function and its presentation or, its, or the way that you see it in a, a log graph. And so the reason of that this is, of course, is that log, say of 10, so this is the logarithm in base 10 of the exponential function of 10 to the x is x. Simple enough. Let's look at some other log numbers, say log of 2, this comes up a lot uh, in uh, information technology and information theory. Uh, it's incredibly important. Most of the field is practically based on that. Um, but the log 2 of 2 to the x is, again, x. Generally, the log of b of b to the x is equal to x log b to the b, which is equal to x times 1, which is equal to x see that around my big head. Uh, the, the point here is that the, the reason that we saw that linear relationship in the previous graph is that this log function is, is basically showing us the relationship between uh, the, the our, 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 our domain and range where the, the range is increasing, or the, our uh, function is increasing by 10 to the x. So, um, there is, because this this relationship holds, and because we're we're able to pull this uh, out of it using the log function, uh, if you have a data set that's increasing extremely rapidly, you can sometimes see a little bit more clearly what's going on if the extreme variances of how fast it's growing can kind of be compressed using that log graph. Just an, as an example, uh, Bitcoin, uh, the price goes up quite a bit, sometimes it drops quite a bit. And so you see a lot of uh, series, if you look back in its history, where it starts kind of low, it jumps around, and it jumps up really high, and then it drops, and then it kind of goes down for a bit. And this is an extremely, you know, volatile graph. Prime dollars per Bitcoin. And it looks something like this. But on the log graph, it looks a little different. Log. It 
it starts not quite as low, kind of jumps a little bit, and then it decreases. And overall, you see this nice trend line over the long term. It's not a 100% fit, but it's a pretty close fit. Um, does this mean it'll always go on like this? Of course not. Uh, but you can see that there's a little bit more of a uh, steady progression over long periods of time than just this you know, big bump that you would only see that in the previous graph. And if you s extend it backwards in time, you get similar bumps, but they're not as pronounced. Uh, and so you can see a little bit more of the data in this particular case uh, if you use a log graph. Uh, and of course, you can learn how to use log graphs a little bit better. Uh, I think Khan Academy covers it a little bit. Uh, but the, the important part is just to know that this is one of the tools that exists. That this is one of the things that it makes log and exponential functions valuable. Another thing to point out ln function. And all ln is is log of a number called e. It's kind of like pi. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can look it up if you want. But it's just this number that comes up all the time in all different areas of math. But it's a special number that allows you to do some things that are pretty cool in calculus that we're not going to talk too much about. But it's important to know that if you see this ln function, all it is is really just a log function. And if you want to convert to between log different log functions, you pick your base, your b right here, log or logarithm in base b, or not base b, uh, I guess in terms of b. Um, So the log b of x divided by the log b of e, or any b, uh, is just the log e of x, and this goes for other numbers, or other values too, uh, if, if you wanted to change e to some random or, or, under, or uh, you know, number of your choice, let's say 2 or 10 or 100 or a million, you know, just to find a is that, that million divide your the, the log whatever that you're trying to define um, by that number to get log a of that number. Uh, this is probably going a little bit too quickly, but again, the, 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 the important part is not to you know dwell too much on the specifics, it's just to know that there's this power available to you, this, this uh, ability to manipulate these logarithm expressions and functions. Um, you, you can get uh, equations where you end up getting, let's say, y to the x plus you know, z to the x plus you know, c equals k or something like that. And one of the things you can do is you can apply log to both sides. So you can get y to the x plus, okay, that doesn't get us very much, but this simplification, let's say log y of the x equals k. So you can have one of the things you can do with logs is you can take the exponent of the whole thing that the log is of, push to the front, so you can go x log y equals k, or I'm not sure if you can see, but x is equal to k over log y. Which, if you're looking for x, you know this is how you can grab it from this initial uh, equation right here. So these are just sort of the things that you can do. Again, this isn't meant to be an exhaustive list. It's just kind of a meant to, to give you a, a roundabout way of showing what sorts of things you can do with log. It's a super useful thing. Again, it comes up all the time, especially in IT um, and uh, communication theory and all sorts of probability theory, it comes up everywhere. So th this isn't just some collection of numbers, you know, some 
curve that looks kind of like this. You know, th this is probably how it's normally taught, that there's this curve, you know, it hits this zero at one, you know, it's, it's got all these values that are defined by whatever exponential function or that it corresponds to, so if this is what b, you know, if this is b, this would be 1. So, you know, it, yes, there's the, you can look at it in terms of this way, but it's much more useful to look at it in terms of the things that it allows you to do, the things that it allows you to manipulate in equations uh, when you need it uh, for other purposes. Uh, one last point, something you'll probably get tripped up on all the time, is if you have, oh my pen is dying, this is awesome, log a plus b is not equal to log a plus b, or log b. It does not work this way. However, log a plus log b is equal to something special, which is log a b, a times b. So, uh, hopefully, I mean, you, you, can, you can derive uh, based on this, based on the other properties of the log function, which you can look up um, just for review purposes if you need it. Uh, you can derive all sorts of neat things. Uh, again, um, if you look back to the, the original definition, you can do stuff. If you had log a, b, and let's say you had a to the power of log a, b, you could have b log a, which is equal to a log a, b, which is equal to A A to B. Kind of roundabout way. But again, th this is not to dwell on each individual rule, just to kind of show you that the power that is available uh, when you start dealing with log uh, and again, the long function, which is just the log function of E. So uh, hopefully this kind of, you know, it's getting to be a little bit longer of a video than I had anticipated, but again, you're, you're not supposed to take from this a deep understanding of the log function and the exponential functions, but just to, to show you that these are useful things. Uh, if you take some time, play around with them, you know, do some practice questions. See if you can dig up some practice questions involving log, ln, and the exponential functions. And especially if you have a little bit of calculus behind you, you know, go and dig it out because it's really useful to, to both model, to understand the world that you live in, uh, and the many, many, many things that move in exponential patterns and that the details of their movement can be illuminated by plotting on a log graph or understanding in terms of the, the logarithm of that function. So, uh, again, uh, this is Eurigiana 120. Uh, hopefully that didn't lead you too far, uh, I guess, over your head. Uh, but I will be back for another video shortly, so enjoy.